And then it goes to what we still call layout, even though it's digitally done. When I worked in Perth at the West Australian, it was all done, still done manually because I'm showing my age now. Um, and the third floor was the production floor. And they had, so you got out of the lift and there was a piece of tape about that far away from the lift door. And if anyone who wasn't a union member like us stepped over that tape, all, uh, they were called the brothers. They were scary on floor three. And if you stepped over the tape, they'd all just down tools because there was a non-union member on the floor. We're like, is that better? Yeah. Weird. Um, and then goes to layout. <coughs> And then the sub-editor writes what? Correct. Now, the important thing about this flow chart, and we're going to cover this, we're going to cover this, um, and the rest of it, you, you know, we can talk about. But the thing about the headline is the sub-editor writes the headline. So the sub-editor reads the story that the journalist has written, and writes a headline to match the story. They've never even seen your media release. So once you know that, you can say, not say whatever you like, but you can kind of say whatever you like in your media release headline because it's never going to appear in print. Let's talk print for a minute because it's easier to visualise. Because the person who writes the headline doesn't know what, you put, what your headline was because the headline has to match the story. Does that make sense? So this goes with that at Suzanne's. So as you're thinking about your headline, you're not thinking about the headline that's going to appear. You're thinking about the headline to do what? Correct, correct. And what Joe did and what some other people do is they send it to me for a bit of loving before it goes to the journalist, which is very smart. So we're going to talk about this second. We're going to talk about this first. So, the $64,000 question is, what do journalists want? What do they want from you? Absolutely. So we are, and, and within that, there are subsections of the media that each have different requirements. From print, radio news, radio programs, TV news, TV programs, um, breakfast and, uh, and a current affair programs. They all have different needs. And twice a year, once in Sydney and once in Melbourne, we have the Meet the Press Masterclass, where nine of the country's top journalists come along. And not only do they tell us what they want from you, but every single business in the room gets to pitch to every single journalist in the room. Because my job is actually to make myself redundant in your life. As gorgeous as you all are, particularly the skiers in the room, Kate, my friend, um, I actually don't want you as a client. I want you not to need me ever. So that's why we run this masterclass and bring the journalist directly to you. So we know what they want from you. And so we're going to, before I do that, we're going to unpack what they want from you. But in some of the conversations that we were having last night, it became apparent that there's, a <clears throat> there's probably a commonly held um, nervousness or fear about journalists, and, and many of the people who were at dinner last night said, how do you get nine journalists to come to your masterclass? Bless you. Welcome. What's in it for them? So before I went to the hospital last night, I thought, well, that's a very good question. I will answer that for you by showing you exactly why the journalists want and need you so much. Hey there, I'm Tom from the Today Show. This is my uh, second Meet the okay, Press Masterclass with Kate and just like last year, even more so than last year, I've come away with a, a whole back pocket, front pocket and uh, jacket pocket full of great stories that I look forward to uh, not only taking to the office but our viewers seeing on the Today Show in the not too distant future. So thank you Kate and thank you to everybody in the room that shared the stories. Hi, this is Brie from Today Extra. It was fantastic attending the event. I've gotten a lot of story ideas. I've met some really inspiring people. And I think I've found some new regulars for our show. Um, it was a fantastic event and a great opportunity. So thanks very much. 
Oh yeah, hello, that's uh, Ben McClellan from the Daily Telegraph. It was really a uh, valuable day for me to sort of find out so many exciting people with ideas out there. And uh, hopefully we can link up in the future and uh, get some content in the media for you and, and obviously get us some good yarns. So uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. If we don't get back to you straight away, we will be in contact. Hi, so I'm Alicia. I'm a producer with The Current Affair. I've just left Kate Engler's Meet the Press. It was amazing. I met so many people that were willing to share their stories with me, which is such a passion of our show, and we just need to share them with the audience. And I'm just exploding with ideas now that I need to count them all again. But I, I just feel that they're so important for everyone to know about. And that the stories they came up with and the pictures were just amazing. I feel like it was so invaluable to do this because there'd be no other way for them to know that this is possible, that they can talk to the journalists that they can come to us and we're here to help and I, I've just always believed that at a current affair and I'm excited to work with them for all these stories to bring to our audience and tell them basically. Thank you. Hi my name is Paul Southwick. I'm a freelance journalist writing for business and aviation. I've just completed my fifth Meet the Press event with Kate, the publicity princess. If you're a journalist looking for fantastic stories new stories, fresh stories that haven't been told before, this is the place to be. And if you're a business owner with a fantastic business and you want to get the news out about how good you are, this is the place to be. This is the place to be. Thank you. So the message is clear. They want you. Paul is so humble and he's always really nervous when he speaks into a microphone. So you can tell who the TV producers are because they're like, hi there. And you can tell who the print people are because they're like, hello. Um, <laughs> it's always really cute. Um, but the message is clear. They want you and they need you. So it is a shift in your thinking once again to move from, oh, I don't want to be a nuisance, to, hey, I've got some really good stuff to share and I know they need me. I know they need me and I know their viewers, listeners and readers want me. Because all media is, when you boil it down, all media really is, is a competition for eyeballs and eardrums. That's it. They just want to capture your eyeballs and keep them for as long as possible and they want to capture your eardrums and keep them for as long as possible. So if you give the journalist something that's going to capture readers or viewers, earballs and eye drums, you know what I mean, um, then you're, you're helping them. They're not the enemy, particularly the people that, that uh, we have come to the masterclass because we choose them very carefully. They're more like my inner, inner sanctum. And Stephen spoke a lot about this this morning, about making a difference. I mean, if your business... If you don't genuinely believe that your business is making a difference to people, get a new one. Because you're working bloody hard not to make a difference. So you want to be making a difference. And that's what putting your exposure on steroids does. So we are going to tell you what they've told us. You might want to write fast and listen faster. So when you think print media, think digital first. Now, I'm happy for you to take photos of this if you must. I would much rather you write it. And let me explain how, a, a bit about the brain works, how the brain works. 8% of you will get what I'm saying because I say it, because you're auditory learners. The vast majority of you are kinesthetic learners. That's why when Stephen and I had a conversation about what are we going to put in the workbook, I said blank pages for me, please. Not my presentation. Not because I don't want you to have it, but because I know that only 8% of you will get it if we do it that way. But I want all of you to get it. So by engaging your body and actually writing it down and engaging your kinesthetic muscle memory and engaging the kinesthetic part of your brain and the visual part of your brain, because you'll see what you write, you will retain this information far greater than if I stuck it in the workbook. So there's a very strategic reason why you've just got blank pages for me because I want you to get this. I want you to get it here, not just get it here and have it drift away when the next bit of information comes in. I really want you to get it. So when you're thinking print media, think digital first. Stephen asked a very good question last night around the, you know, how the media landscape has changed. And I explained it a little bit when I first started talking, that the digital landscape, yes, it's taking over from the print and, and the digital circulation, if you like, is out stripping that of the printed product, the printed book, 
Um, but the printed book is still, uh, is still important. So the digital team will start at 5 a.m. on the day of. So you, you know, if you want that early strike, then get up early. If you want to follow up a, a newspaper journalist, which you absolutely should once you send the media release, find them between 10 and half 12. Not after lunch, why not? You think daily paper, why not? Yes, they're on deadline. And unless you've got a cure for cancer, don't call them. Because nothing, they, they know what they're writing for tomorrow's book. They've done the interviews, they've done the research, and they're in the process of writing the stories for the book for the next day. So always phone them in the morning, and between 10 and half 12 is the best time to phone them. And always, it's what's the, they, they say this over and over and over again. For the six years we've been running this masterclass, the message is consistent. It is always the story behind your product, which is what we talked about in the first session together. It's not your thing. It's the story behind your thing. It's the story behind your thing. And make sure you understand what the journalists write about. It's like the story I told you about Leo D'Angelo Fisher, BRW, Business Review Weekly, getting stories about onesies. It's not going to work. So do your research. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Don't underestimate the power of being featured digitally. Whilst some people love to be featured in print so they can cut out the article and put it in a frame, put it on the wall in their office and walk past it every time it could go me. And you should do that. You absolutely, bless you, you absolutely should do that. But don't underestimate the power of appearing digitally. Remember Wendy with the face goo? So her story wasn't the lead story on the digital edition that day. But there were so many eyeballs reading that story because they track it minute by minute that the journalist phoned me and said, we need a second voice for this story because we're moving it to the front. So they were able to track it, see all the interest in this story on Wendy. We phoned, I phoned Wendy and said, we need a second voice. You know, we had a, um, like her facial chemist guy that mixed up the goo, interviewed him, added to the story, and it was moved to basically the front page of the digital edition. So it's incredibly powerful, and it can happen that fast because they'll monitor it. And if they want more information for you and they want to bump you to the front, then hee-haw, let them. Um, always, because it's a competition for eyeballs, think about what can I do, what can I tell the journalist about in terms of what I've got visually that can enhance this story. Think video, think pictures. Don't send them with the pitch, but, but lang oh, sorry, language it. Language that you have that in the email that you send to them. And they're always working on multiple stories at once, particularly in that digital environment. So they're busy. They've got busy brains, busy inboxes. When it comes to radio, radio is divided into two distinct sections, news and then programs. If you are going to pitch to radio news, or TV news for that matter, make sure it's newsworthy. Make sure it's newsworthy. Because you'll be interviewed and your sound bite will be about 10 seconds and it will be part of the news bulletin. So you need to make sure it's newsworthy. If it's not breaking news, then perhaps consider pitching it to a program, which we'll talk about in a moment. Never call the chief of staff of the newsroom at 10 minutes to the hour. Why not? Michael, I know you know the answer. Chuckling there. Um, Correct. The news is about to happen. They won't answer the call. And if they do and it's not a cure for cancer, they won't be happy with you. Um, and make sure you're ready to be interviewed from 5 a.m. Because if it's a slow news day and they've covered your piece of news, they will run that snippet of you, every news bulletin throughout the day till something comes along to bump you off. So be ready. Make sure you're ready. The rules of the pitch. Always make that follow-up phone call. Email first, email the media release and the pitch first, but always make that follow-up phone call, not five minutes later, but an appropriate amount of time depending on the publication. Um, because they, you know, I'll, I'll show you a quote from Steve Colquhoun, one of the nicest guys going around media circles. Um, make sure when you do phone them, it's a really short, sharp, succinct pitch. You've got about 10 seconds. 
You've got about 10 seconds, which is why over dinner last night, people were amazed that the journalists come for, you know, eight hours. They're like, how do you get them for eight hours when I can't get them for 10 seconds? And the answer is because I ask them. And as you heard, they get great stories. So, but when you're pitching on the phone, get to the point. Not just, oh, did you get my media release? They'll say, which one of the last thousand are you talking about? So be specific and concise. Keeping it simple doesn't mean dumbing it down. But it's got to be accessible for the journalist that fast. They don't have time to have you unpack your thoughts and explain it all to them. They want to know, is this a goer or not? Yes or no? That fast. So keep it simple. And don't confuse editorial with advertorial. Oh, if you take out this ad uh, for $500, we'll give you some editorial. That's not editorial. That's advertorial. It's very different. You can't buy editorial coverage, which is why it's so powerful. So Steve says it's actually about picking up the phone and making the call to the scary journalist, but it's probably the one thing that's guaranteed to make your media release stand out. So just take his advice. You know, they want you to email first, but they kind of want you to follow up as well with phone call because it makes a difference. When you're thinking about radio programs, each program will have its own rhythm and its own demographic, its own target audience and its own kind of energy about it. So you need to understand which of the programs across the day in radio is going to be the best one for you to pitch to. And the only way you'll know that is by understanding that medium. So is it suitable for breakfast? Is it suitable for mornings? Is it suitable for afternoons, drive or evenings? Which is the best program for you based on which radio station you're talking about pitching to? And we're mostly talking here, almost exclusively talking here, about talkback radio. Trying to pitch to a, uh, a radio station that has a largely music format, like Triple M or Nova, their format is music. So unless you're the latest contestant on The Voice and you're going to go on and sing, probably not the right media for you. But talkback radio different story because it's about people talking and that's what you want you want to be interviewed right because this is what we want to have happen don't get the on-air talents name wrong the amount of emails and pitches that the channel 9 today team get saying i'm sure koshi would love this for those of you who don't know he's on channel 7 um and they just bin it no matter how great the pitch is it could be the cure for cancer but if they say, I'm sure Koshi will love this, they'll, they won't touch it. There's a fierce, fierce rivalry between Channel 7 and Channel 9. That's why we only have the Channel 9 people in our masterclass, because they came and supported the first one. And so I'm an I'm a incredibly loyal person. It takes a lot to get me offside. Um, once you do, there's no coming back. Just fair warning. Um, but, uh, but the Channel 9 folk, they've, they've supported us from, from day one. So we don't have any Channel 7 people in the room. Um, but don't, they, will, they will ditch you because they know, if you say, oh, I'm sure Koshi will love this, they know that you've pitched it to Channel 7 and they won't run the same story. So they won't touch it. So make sure you get that right. Um, and consider weekends when they might have more space to fill but less, less staff there and less producers to fill it. When you think TV, broadly speaking, you need to think visual. What are they going to film as part of your story? And I was speaking at an event once in Victoria and there was this accommodation provider from Gippsland um, who had accommodation huts, um, really gorgeous apparently, and she said, so, I want the Today Show to come out and do the weather cross from my accommodation. And I'm like, awesome. What are they going to film when they come there? And she said, well, we've got this wild kangaroo and it comes up to guests and eats from their hands. And I'm like, well, that's awesome. What else have you got? She goes, no, 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 it's not a pet. It's a wild kangaroo. And it doesn't eat from our hands. It eats from the hands of all of the guests that it's never met before. 
And I said, that's awesome. I'm sure your overseas guests love it. She's like, yes, they do. I'm like, that's fantastic. What else have you got? She said, I don't think you're listening to me. And I said, if the Today Show is going to spend $25,000 to schlep three hours to the east to Gippsland, they're going to want to film more than Skippy. Because Skippy doesn't cut it. Because in the weather, there are six different crosses. So they need six different things to shoot. With a camera, not a gun. <laughs> Kangaroo for lunch, anyone? Um, <laughs> so make sure they have something to shoot. Think pictures. So with TV uh, in the mornings, they are working on multiple stories at once. Um, the best time to phone the journalists for someone like the Today Show or Sunrise Monday or Friday around 10 a.m. after they've had their production meetings on the weekend. If you want to pitch something to weekend today, then pitch to them on the th Wednesday or Thursday. And as Matt Mitchell, uh, former chief of staff of the Today Show, the subject line needs to be a real zinger or what I would say unwalk pastable. Because as they look down their inbox, media release, media release, please when you send a media release, don't ever put media release in the subject line. That's like having a $5 million waterfront property and letting Hells Angels move in. Like it's just squandering your greatest resource. So make that subject line unwalk pastable. Absolutely unwalk pastable. With a current affair, um, and today, tonight, in the, um, in the WA and South Australia marketplace, that program's still running. Um, again, you've got to think visual, you've got to think sort of entertainment because people, it's a busy time of night, right? People are trying to get dinner and the kids are home from school and they're skanky and meh, 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 meh. So it's got to grab their attention. But it's a longer story format. So with a, a story that goes to air for anywhere between three and a half and seven minutes will probably take three or four days to film because they'll want different overlay vision, they'll want different locations, they'll want... So f to give you an example, to put that in, in another sort of context, Channel 7 News ran a story on a client in Melbourne and it was like a 90 second story. And we filmed for four and a half hours. So know that you need, if you're gonna pitch to TV, have the time to shoot the story and put aside the whole day because it won't happen fast. Don't call current affair uh, producers between 10 and half 11 or half three and six. And be ready. What we mean by be ready, people have literally sold out of the product that's featured on a current affair. And then who do you think the viewers call when they can't get, or your website's crashed, or who do you think the, who do you think the viewers call? Yeah, they call Acker. They don't want to take the call. They don't know about your website. They don't know that you've sold out a product or why. They don't care. <laughs> they just don't want to be bothered by viewers who can't get what it is they've just promoted. So be ready. Have the stock. Or if you don't have the stock, have a communication plan in place that communicates when the stock will be available. Oh, we've been inundated as a result of the current affair coverage. Thank you so much, Gladys, for your order. It's on order now. It will be three weeks. And then in that three-week period, communicate with Gladys at least weekly. So Gladys doesn't think, has it been three weeks yet? I might just give them a call. Communicate with them. People don't mind how long they wait so long as they know what the process is and you haven't forgotten about them. Oh, he seems so nice when I met him and he hasn't called. Yeah, that's what they think. So just communicate with them. And we talked about having laser-like precision and when that's right, when that's right, magic happens. And you've seen examples of the magic. And the magic's there for, your, for you guys to take as well. It's there for your taking. So the media release has one job. What is that job, do you think? Great, great answer, but not quite. Exactly. It has one job, and that's to get the journalist to call you. But if you chunk it down, right, if you chunk it down into the process, you know that this job is one thing, and that's that. One thing, one thing only. 
So with the media release in terms of how it needs to look on the page, so this is an interactive moment. I know it's after lunch. You probably had a gin and tonic at lunch and you're feeling sleepy. Wake up. So uh, the answers to these questions are yes or no. Make it easy for you. Do you know the date? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Do you know the date? The answers to these questions are yes or no. Yo, do you know your name and phone number? Excellent. Can you write one sentence? Can you write two or three sentences in a row? Can you do that again? Here's a tricky question for you. Can you speak? Oh my God, you can. Do you know three or four key reasons why your business product or service exists, i.e. what is the problem you are solving? What is the gap in the market? Do you know three or four industry things about why you exist? Yes? Great. I'm not talking features of your product here. Never. Can you put one final two or three sentences in a row together? Do you know where the hashtag is on your keyboard? Some of you do, some of you need a bit of research on the hashtag. That's it. That's your media release. See how this looks like that at Suzanne's? We've created a little bit more white space here because our eyes love white space. We live in a world where if you can't say it in 140 characters, you're banging on. So we need white space, our eyes love it. But see how we've got sort of the first paragraph, the second paragraph, the quote, the dot points, and the hashtags at the end. I was speaking at, a, speaking at an event in Albury and this girl said, what's the hashtags for? And I said, it means we're done. There's, there's no more, we're done. And she goes, oh, I might use that on my eHarmony profile. You're a bad kisser, hash, hash, hash. I said, use it how you will. Use it how you will. Um, but that is just sort of industry code for, there's not another second page. We're done, this is it, complete. We're done. So present your media release like that and they'll know that you know what you're talking about. They'll know that you're not a rookie. So let's talk, circle back around to headlines. <sighs> this woman had a book who was featured, which was featured in the Oscars gift bag a couple of years ago, which was a pretty big deal, right? Um, and she wanted to do a, a media release about it as she should, but she couldn't think of a headline. So um, the headline that we came up with was stressed out celebrities embrace Melbourne woman as their stress busting guru. And then we unpacked the fact of why they're so stressed out, their lives are under the microscope, scrutiny 24-7, blah, 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 and that that can apply to, stress can apply to everybody, and it went nuts. Absolutely went nuts. Her interview on ABC Radio went for about 25 minutes. It was gold because they had people calling in talking about what stresses them out and she was giving them strategies about how they could deal with their stress. Pretty cool, huh? Another example for you. I'm trying to jog your brain. Um, so sun shines on local community groups. This, this is a really cool story because three kind of disconnected and disparate um, organisations got together for the benefit of a, um, of a community project in Barwon Heads down in Victoria, not far from where I live. It was in October that this, this joint venture all came together. So sunshines on local community groups, like, big deal. I'm sure Alexi whole, who cares, uh, you know, test for content and headlines. So, you know, that's not a great one. So what we came up with was Santa comes early to Barwon Heads community groups because it was in October. Everyone was starting to think about Christmas, but Santa had come early to Barwon Heads. So it was like, oh, what's that about? And that's all your headline needs to do. It needs to pique that curiosity to have them go, oh. And once you've got them going, oh, you've got them. It's all it needs to do. Coverage. Here in Wollongong, with your headline, often people ask, how long does, your he does that my headline need to be? And I say, and you might want to write this down, your headline needs to be as long as it needs to be to get the job done. And what's the job of the headline? Correct, to get the journalist's attention. 
So this is what we call a stack headline. She washed cars at eight, polished her neighbour's silver at ten, asked for jobs in a local area and got one at eleven, working in a beachside kiosk and started her own company at twenty-eight. Is it any wonder that four short years later, BRW have just named her company as one of the fastest growing in Australia? Because she won the BRW Fastest Growing Business Award. And she's a Wollongong girl. Yep. So you just need to think a bit differently about your business. And with, uh, with old mate Les here, the, our time, who would have thought time management was so sexy? So he didn't need a headline because he came along and met the press instead, and that's all of his Hi, team, just a oh, boy. So, who is the audience for your media release? Yes, the journalist. So often when people, and, and Kate, this is where I might bring you in if I may. Often people write the headline thinking about their target customer. So Kate, would you mind grabbing a mic? Could we have a mic for Kate, please? And the Let's reason I want you to this. share very bravely is because there's a massive lesson here for the room and, and thank you for agreeing to, to share. So can you share the headline that you shared with me on the break? Yep. Um, and I changed it over lunch, but this is what I had before. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, Overcharged, sorry, are you overcharged, stressed out and feel you have no control over the conflict in your life? There is another way. So who's the audience for that piece of communication? Read it out again. Nice and loud. That's for my target and it's not, yeah, it's wrong. Correct. <laughs> it's, yeah. for your, it's for your end user, your customer, right? Mm. But that's a really common mistake that people make. Are you struggling with giving up smoking? For example, Michael. And if the journalist isn't a smoker, they'll go, nah, bin. So speak to the journalist, not your customer. And we never, ever, ever use the first person participle in a headline, anywhere in a media release, really, unless it's inside a quote. So you, me, my, our, ours. It's always written in the third person. Always written in the third person. Make sense? Let's have another play. Who did some work over lunch and has a headline that they would like to share with me? Are we going for time? Okay, 10 minutes. Yeah, awesome, so can we just, thanks Kate. What's your name, my darling? I'm Monique. And I had Monique. A I had a Merlot so I feel much better. Oh, <laughs> perfect, great. <laughs> See, that's what, oh, I should have brought out the wine in the first <laughs> session. Is that would have been the answer. Is it Huxley be gone? Huxley, Huxley be gone. Huxley, you're in the back seat. <laughs> you're not in the front seat and you're not in the driver's seat. Okay, so I might have it a bit mixed up. So what's your, uh, just give me some context around what you do. Well, I'm a real estate agent. Yep. With 16 years in the industry. Yep. But I've also written a book on all the cons of the industry. Great. Yeah. So media loves a whistleblower, just saying. Yeah. Those insider stories. So it says... Buyers, sellers, beware. The honest agent lifts the lid on all the cons of the real estate industry. Okay. <laughs> I've, I must apologise. I have the worst poker face. Like, I'm just <laughs> bad at it. Um, so, just read it out again because we're just going to have a fiddle. Uh, buyers, sellers, beware. The honest agent lifts the lid on all the cons of the real estate industry. Okay. So what I would think we would rather say there, and do you work in the local area? Yes. Wollongong? Yes. Right. In, in Sydney, yep. And what, sorry? Sydney as well. Okay, okay. So let's just focus on Wollongong at the moment. Yep. Real estate is one of those industries that is micro, 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 laser focused. Yes. So let's just talk Wollongong for a minute. Yep. Just read it to me once more, please. Buyers, seller, beware, the honest agent lifts the lid on all the cons of the real estate industry. Okay, so I would rather say something like, Wollongong Real Estate Insider has timely post-budget warning for mums and dads wanting to take the plunge. That's what I'd say. Something but like nothing that. about the book. Nothing about the book. <laughs> oh, yes, okay, yes, okay. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> 
Megan, I might need one of those special mineral waters just right about now. Do I need to say any more? Okay. Um, so no. No, 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 no. So let me give you a, um, a real life real estate example. So in, uh, in Queensland several years ago, well, many years ago now, the pool fencing laws changed such that if a tenant drowned in the pool and the fence wasn't up to the new regulations, the new standards, the landlord was going to be held liable. So everybody knew about this, right? Everybody knew. And a woman who had come to one of our classes said, everyone knows, but no one's talking about it. I'm like, well, let's make, let's do something about that. Let's make a bit of a difference. So she dumbed down the legislation because no one's going to say, oh, it's okay. 55,000 pages of legislation because it's just riveting, right? No one's going to do that. So she dumbed it down into what she called a consumer report for landlords or something about the new pool fencing laws. I can't remember what she called it. That's a job for Alexi and his team, beautiful, brilliant copywriters, which is quite a different skill to writing a media release, just by the way. So that, you know, over to them for that. But she had a sexy headline on the front because she was actually doing some work with our great mate, Pete Godfrey. But she put out a media release that said, warning to Queensland or Townsville landlords, because she was in Townsville, um, new pen pool fencing laws might land you in jail or something like that, something kind of sexy. And she put this report together. She had 130 landlords contact her in three days to get the report. Now, as you would know with real estate, like when you sell it, you sell it on the basis of your rental roll. So to have 130 new leads flood into her business simply because she smart smart so your book is the book is the caboose yeah your business actually is the caboose it's not the engine it'll come along for the ride but it's not the engine your book isn't the engine your business isn't the engine the issues so lots of people were sitting on the fence saying oh i'm not going to buy another investment property because i don't know the outcome of the election well, now we do. So that headline is also very of the now because we're talking about the traps that are, that are out there in this post-election environment for Wollongong residents. So there's not a, there's not a um, media outlet in Wollongong that won't run that. And then are you broadly Sydney, all over Sydney or in pockets of? Uh, I do high-end. <coughs> so just hold your microphone up. I'd sell high-end properties. So all over Sydney? Yeah, and down the Andrew Valley and... So you just pick the suburbs that are appropriate for that and roll it out in Double Bay in Kangaroo Valley. It's the same media release, my darling. Yeah. It's like the conversation we had over here. I don't want you going, oh my God, this woman's amazing. She wants me to like five media releases a week. Like, who does she think she is? We're busy enough. It's not about that. It's about being really smart and leveraging. So we're going to leverage the mentors and the mentees. 70% of it will stay the same. Yours, probably 90% of it will stay the same change the median house price, change the suburb, change the person that you're quoting if they're local. But you would be the primary voice in that media release and that won't change. Mm -hmm. So probably 90% of yours won't change. But you've got multiple bites at that same re media release because they're all sent to different journalists. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Is that helpful? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. great. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm mindful of the time. Okay, so... What questions can I answer for you? Can we just pass the mic over, please? You were saying that you've got to pitch like at certain times for follow, following day and all that sort of thing. Are you, are you saying if you've got an urgent thing that's got to be pitched now that you're expecting the media to put it on tomorrow so you've got to have it that prepared or are you just saying... You've got to just pitch to them then and then they might play it the following week or the week after that. Like Depends on what it is. If it's urgent, we would want it to run the next day. And they, what, they come and record it live for whatever reason they may need to. And they what, sorry? And then what, they'd come and record it live or, or fast? Yeah, week. so for example, we had a real estate agent, interestingly, who was talking about the power of NLP and hypnosis in sales in real estate. And he had an article in the Courier Mail in Brisbane. By 10 o'clock that morning... He was in front of a, an ACCA team and it went to air that night, a current affair. So it can happen that fast. And if you pitch to radio, for example, and they take it up straight away, 
can that cause TV to pick it up as well? Like, are they are they looking at other mediums, and and or do you have to do that all yourself? There is a great and and when at the masterclass on we have a panel to start with before everyone breaks down and pitches to each of the journalists, and they all say the same thing, particularly the. Um, the producers of TV and radio, they are up at some ungodly hour. I would never be a TV or radio producer. And they're reading the paper. So media consumes other media. Please write that down, it's gold. Media consumes other media. So they will look to the daily papers or the key local papers for content. And many a story has started out in the local paper and ended up on national TV because media consumes other media. I feel you've got a question brewing. Just um, grab the mic, if you could. Uh, magazines, are they any different in terms of how you pitch the story or when you contact the journalist and so forth? So print magazines have about a three-month lead time. So yes, the time that you pitch to them. So there are... Um, are you guys familiar with Source Bottle? Okay, we need another session, um, but we don't have time. So, um, I want you to go out to sourcebottle.com.au. Sourcebottle is like a dating site for journalists and experts, right? So, the journalist will place what we call a call out, um, and it might be, and I'll give you a real life example of my naturopath here in Sydney. Um, uh, looking for dietitians, nutritionists or naturopaths on the new phenomenon of activating nuts. Activating nuts just means soaking them. <sighs> These trendy new terms. And so Hay I sent it off to Hayden and he responded taking a contrarian approach saying there's actually nothing new about activating nuts. It simply means soaking them. And in days when we weren't trying to do everything yesterday, we would soak the nuts before we ate them. There's nothing new about it, but here are the health benefits. Double page spread, 30 new clients. So, um, why did I tell you that story? What was your question? Well, uh, in my, yeah. Print so, magazine. So, so, in so, my case, so no, I've got it now. I've come back to myself. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, at, on Source Bottle at the moment, they are calling for Father's Day gift ideas. Now, we are in May, June, July, August, September. They're calling for them now. So if you subscribe to Source Bottle, it's free. It's a free service. Um, it, you'll get a heads up about the lead time and what they're thinking of doing. So magazines are a completely different kettle of fish in terms of timing. Um, but in terms of how you pitch to them, exactly the same but make sure it matches the magazine. Don't approach men's health with a new oestrogen supplement for women. Yeah? Make sure it matches. And that gets back to three... Oh! That gets back to three drawings ago, four drawings ago. That gets back to this. And if you're, planning, yeah, so if you're planning a product launch in spring, you should be talking to them probably at the end of autumn. Yes. Oh, I sell a particular product to a certain market segment, if you like. But the point is, so we've got new products coming out in the spring. It's too late for me to be talking to a magazine journalist in spring about some totally. product coming out in spring. Yeah. So what you do is you just phone, let's just pretend it's Men's Health, phone Men's Health and say, what's your deadline for the spring edition? They'll tell you. Or speak to the advertising department and ask for a media kit. Then be prepared to have them call you till you die or buy. Um, although most of them don't because they're lazy. Um, but that's where you'll get all the deadline information. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, online magazines are a different kettle of fish because they, they're the ever-hungry content beast. They just need more content, more content, more content, more content. So a lot of the printed magazines now have an online cousin, brother, sister, whatever. Um, so that might be away as well. And when you pitch a new product, it's a, it's a bit of a different ball game to business because the product is about the thing. So you need to think about how you're going to pitch that. And one of the great stories that Robin, the women's editor that comes to the masterclass, talks about is that she was sent this um, new product and obviously done by PR people with way too much time on their hands. So it came in a big box 
when they opened the lid of the box, it had helium balloons in it that emptied confetti as the balloons went up. There was like a, there was a, like a bag with a, you know, confetti went everywhere. She's like, I was not going to run anything about that product because we spent the next six months cleaning up bloody confetti from every drawer, every, every, everything in the office. So you can be too cute. You can be too cute. I, oh God, I'm having a flashback. I had this woman once who wrote a book before Fifty Shades of Grey that was not, I mean, Fifty Shades of Grey was bad, right? This was. And, uh, and anyway, she said, oh, I really want you to, I really want your help. I've already launched it to the media. I said, all right, great. Send me the pack that you sent to the media. Pink fluffy handcuffs, huh? which my boys thought were fantastic. Um, but it was just, and it was bad chick lit. Like it was really, it wasn't great. But nor was the pack that went with it. So you've got to think, think it through. So that it lands the way you want it to land. Yeah? Can I build on that? Um, and, and also what we spoke before about before, how... Um, the media is competing for viewers and readers yep. by creating the best story, I guess. So then how do you ensure that you control your content and get the media to uh, publish your story in a way that you agree with rather than them um, overdoing it or creating a drama out of it? It's time for another diagram. <laughs> so this gets... Um, Separate note, new note. This gets back to media interview training, which we cover off on day three of the masterclass because it's one thing to get the media coverage, but then you're sitting in front of the journalist and you go, blah, 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 blah. And they go, oh, God, let's move on. So you need to be really clear on what your key messages are. And that's your key message. And you need to have three distinct and different ways of conveying that key message, and only three, not four. Nay, shall thou count to four, five is right out, three. Any Monty Python fans in the room? Excellent, love you guys. Um, so three, that's it. Three ways of conveying that key message. And here's another dry game for you. When you're thinking about media interviews, this is getting into day three of the masterclass, let me ask you, what does the Q stand for? Media, think media interview, what does the Q stand for? Yes. What does the A stand for? Correct. What does the P stand for? Great guess. Excellent guess. Very good guess. Positioning? Another good guess. <laughs> I like this game. Can we play it a bit more? Great guess, great guess. Oh, that's a really good guess. <laughs> you got it. In the media interview, what is the most important component? That's a, I've never had that before. That's a really excellent guess. Like, hmm? Shall I tell you? Yeah. Let me tell you. <laughs> the point. And the point is conveyed like diagram 27. So the most important component of your interview is the point. What is the point you want to convey? What are the key messages you want to convey? And it kind of doesn't matter which question they ask you because if you've done this preparation, P also stands for preparation, but not in this instance, it doesn't matter what question they ask you, my darling, you'll be able to make your point because you will have done the work of the flower. Here's one I prepared earlier. So if you do this work, it doesn't matter what question. And look, and I know we all roll our eyes when politicians do it because they do it so overtly and so obviously avoiding the question. But they always get their point across. So there are lessons to be learned. You know, as I said, sometimes the greatest mentors are those that show you what not to do. 
But in terms of the fact that they stay on message, some of them don't do a bad job. Go back and listen to any interview you can find with Julie Bishop. Good place to start. Good place to start. Jacinda Ardern. Even better place to start. Because your point is what's going to keep the media interview on the path that you want it to be on. You know, we had, when I worked in-house for a finance company, there were uh, joint managing directors. There's an ego battle just right there because they couldn't decide who was going to be the boss. So the joint managing directors. And then there was a junior director. And one of the MDs um, was a great orator. He was funny. He was charming. He was engaging. He was a former international president of YPO. He knew how to hold a room. So he did most of the media. And then the other managing director was sort of saying, well, you know, I can, you know, I can talk to things as well. So we gave him some media training. And Rocky actually did a pretty good job. Rocky did a really good job, actually. He just needed to get out kind of from behind the shadows. But the, then the junior director did a bit of this one about why it was that he was never wheeled out. And he, he headed up a slightly different division of the, uh, of the business. So we pitched... Uh, my boss and I pitched an idea to the finance uh, editor of the West Australian and he came in for an interview and I wasn't in the interview because I wouldn't have allowed this to happen but, um, and, and my boss is a, was a doyen of, of PR but he just couldn't get a word in. And this junior director talked about like just about everything except what the pitch was about and then in the last five minutes he goes, oh, I suppose I better tell you about the blah, blah, I don't even remember what it was. And then when the article came out and the blah, blah wasn't mentioned, he's like, oh, these bloody journalists just write about what they want to. And Chris, my boss, said to him, you didn't speak about it. You were with him for an hour and a half and you spent five minutes on it. Of course he didn't write about it. So you can control the message with the flower technique. You can absolutely control it. Michael, uh, do you want to grab the mic? These questions are good. Um, so, just getting down to making it happen. Yep. So, if I want to get an article in the local paper in Geelong. Yep. Are you uh, from Geelong? No. Oh. I'm just... So... Neighbour. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> are you from Geelong? I passed Geelong. I'm down on the coast. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, so, I've got my uh, media kit. Is that it? The press release? Media release. Then... What do I do? Do I find out a specific journalist in a specific paper who is... What do I... How do I... What's the next step? Sure. Great question. So there's the... Um, with something like the Geelong Advertiser, broadly speaking, there's the hard way or the easy way. The easy way is to come along to the masterclass and meet them because, like, I'm handing them to you on a silver platter. But, the, um, but obviously the Geelong Advertiser isn't there. Or the Wollongong paper isn't yeah, there. Yeah, because I'm thinking of duplicating the thing in every regional paper. So, great. So, what you want to do is your... If they're regional papers, they may not have a health writer. But if they did have a health writer, I would go to the health writer. Yeah? So, you just need... This is where you need to understand the media that you're pitching to. And flick through the paper. Or, you know, Google health writer plus Wollongong leader or whatever. Um... Read what they write about. Read what they write about. So the important, but you've got to be, you've got to be strategic about it. So there was a chap in South Australia years ago who did gas conversions for motor vehicles, petrol, gas, um, and and we did this kick-ass media release together, and he sent it off because we don't do that for clients because we don't want clients, right? We just want to empower you and have you go forth and multiply. So um, and uh, and so we, he booked a coaching call a week later or so, and um, he was, had a really gravelly voice, and he goes, ah, oh, this bloody publicity stuff, no, it's not working, not working. And I said, oh, right, okay, good, let's talk about that. Um, so, uh, so we got the media release, did you send it out exactly as you were saying? Yep. I said, who did you send it to? He goes, the business editor. And I said, okay, and help me understand why it was you sent it to the business editor. He goes, because I'm in business, like I was the numbskull. And, um, and then I said, okay, so who is the... Who is the user? Who's the customer? And he goes, the consumer? And then he just paused. He goes, 
I sent it to the wrong bloke, didn't I? <laughs> I said, don't change a thing except the date on the top and send it to the chief of staff. Three quarters of a page. He goes, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> that was as much as I apology I was going to get from him, so I took that graciously. So think about who that might be. Every regional paper may not have a health writer. So it would go to the chief of staff or the editor. So you'd just phone them and say, if it's a daily paper, as some of the regionals are, there will be multiple chiefs of staff because one person can't sit on the desk 24-7. So they'll have a roster, right? So we always have the chief of staff of the Daily Telegraph, for example, um, come to the Sydney Masterclass. But Ben, who you saw there, he did it two years ago, couldn't do it last year because he was on roster. So another cause came. Another chief of staff came. Um, if it's a weekly publication, it's usually just the one. So just phone them and say, who's the chief of staff or who's the editor? They'll say, it's Bill Smith. And they might, then you say, can I have their email address? And they probably won't give you bill.smith at wollongong.leader, but they might give you newsdesk at cos at, cos just stands for chief of staff, cos, uh, or, or newsdesk at, or whatever. They might give you a generic one. But once you know the... They all have the same protocol, angler.kate at whatever, bill.smith at news.com, or might be kangler at Fairfax Media, whatever. Once you know that protocol, then you can extrapolate it. It's not, not rocket science. Oh, you just copy that in. Yeah, and then um, just send it to them. So some of these papers, like I think the Cumberland Press from memory, they, they're kind of centralised in the, in the sense Some of them are. So... So, if, so how do you handle them? You just go to the central and try and because if you if you want to get it in, you know, all the different papers, do you have to go to the different papers or you go to the? You'd have to be clear on, and you're right. So there might be, um, there might sort of be a collection in the leader group, for example. There might be one main editor that kind of manages the contents for three different mastheads. So you'd probably just send the one. But don't assume that this editor manages all of these others as well, because there might actually be another editor over here that does those. So just that's just uh, that's a bit of sweat equity, a bit of ringing around, a bit of understanding the landscape that uh, you're playing in. And let's say you get it in the paper there. Uh, is that kind of going to give fodder for perhaps digital? But yeah. 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 So. So, um, so uh, we recently, we actually did a campaign for a client um, and it appeared physically in the local leader uh, of her area where the store was, but it appeared in the digital edition of the Herald Sun. So, yes. So, if I got a, an article published and it was actually a winner and got yep. published, let's say for someone in Geelong... Yep. Could I can I recycle that story for someone in Western Australia and or somewhere else in Ballarat, or would it get picked up? As it wouldn't a get duplicate? If, if it was a Geelong person. Barry in Geelong quit smoking. No, no, I get a new person in in Ballarat. Yes, that's what that's same this, story. That's the yes, that's the green, the evergreen release we talked about back yeah. here and over here. Yeah. Yes, ninety percent of it would be the same. And so I'm very mindful, sorry to cut you off, I'm very mindful of the time but I'm also mindful that you guys have given up two days and you've got lots of questions. I want, as my gift to you and to thank um, Stephen and Megan for having me, I want to give everybody the opportunity to have a 45 minute media angle discovery call with me. You will leave this call with a media angle. That's my promise, front and back. Um, Megan's got the forms for you. I need you to fill this out and leave it with me before I go, before you go. And I need you to book a time. Now, as you know, the Meet the Press Masterclass is coming up in June in Sydney. If you want to also speak with me about that, please book a time on the sheet that says uh, New South Wales, Queensland and other states. If that is not of interest to you, then you need to wait to July because I'm really busy, as you can appreciate, getting this the final the final um, organisation for this masterclass done. So if the June it's the 13th, 14th, 15th of June is if that is of interest to you, the uh, New South Wales, Queensland, and other states form with the May dates is where you book your time. Otherwise, it's in July. Book your time. Please put the date and time in your diary with a reminder 
The reason I ask you to fill in a form is I will do my research on you before that call and I'll turn up ready to play. My request is you turn up ready to play because if not, I'm just moving on to the next call. It's just about being respectful of each other's times. So I'm very happy to brainstorm more with you, but we just don't have the time to go around every single person in the room here, so we'll do that offline. So are those instructions clear? Any questions about the instructions? So these booking sheets will be at the back of the room, and I'll be hanging around to, to answer any questions that you, that you may have. Has that been helpful? Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for um, having me. Thank you, Stephen. All right. Big round of applause. Thank you, Kate.